Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Mario and in this tutorial I would like to show a way how you could do a spiral geometry both on the inside and on the outside of the object. So in case that you would like to have a detail like this where both of them connect at the same place, then yeah, this is something that we're going to cover now. So let's get started. All right, so what are we going to need is a cylinder. So let me just select and scale like let's say so. Uh, and also one thing with the cylinder is if we go to my poly cylinder, uh, I would like to increase the subdivisions to something like 28. So whenever you're working with cylinders and trying to plan, try, and just thinking in terms that you would like to have any sort of detail on it later, it is just good to have more subdivisions than less because you will get less stretching and less pinching. Just something to keep in mind and uh, one other thing that i would like to do is create maybe another cylinder from it like so turn this just grid off and also what we're going to need is a let me just click away is we're going to need a helix so i'm going to scale one as well and i'm going to play with the dimension of, of the helix so you can play it with the attributes manager uh, here you have some settings on the height weight uh, width radius and so on uh, or you can also go to channel box, uh, polyhelix one, and the same settings you will have here. So if you now, let's say, play with the width. Okay, so you will notice that my mouse is fairly sensitive to uh, the values here, that it's jumping between larger values. If you want something less uh, aggressive, you can just click on one of the value names right here. Go to the viewport and hold shift and control middle mouse drag and then you will have a bit more smooth uh, value transition and what will not be as aggressive and now i just need to play with some of the options here so i don't need so much of a radius so let me just tone this down a bit and two important things here to mention one let me just turn the wireframe on uh, what we need to have is we need to match the number of segments, actually the number of edges, both in helix and in cylinder. So meaning we had in cylinder 28 and I need to do the same thing here, so 28. Uh, the reason for that is we're going to use booleans and once I connect these two together, I would like that, our, that the points match. Uh, another thing are coils. So for example, if you click now on coil and try to add more, you will see what what's happening is now that basically you're, lo you're losing that uh, value that you set up before. So if you're going to three uh, and go to four and let's say to six, I get you. I think you, you get the picture. So it should be only in uh, specific intervals that you actually get the value you need. And let me also reduce the radius a bit more like so okay i think that will be good uh one other thing also worth mentioning is that we are we now uh you can decrease the subdivision axes as well and let me just show you what i mean camera base selection on let me delete this is what are we going to use uh, we're going to use booleans and if we use booleans, I will try to avoid having this edge close to this connection right here because that's going to be our new connection. So you can also go just for the sake of simplicity, you can set this to four so you can see this edge a bit more clear. And if I now, let's say, hit a scale and just scale it a bit inside. I just want that this edge is on the inside. So basically this edge, that it's on the inner side. So the reason for that is once we do uh, booleans, uh, that we have a clean connection here between these two objects without any edges interfering, more or less. Okay, so uh, like so. And what I would like to do is just create a clone here for now. All right, um, one other thing that I would like to do before we continue is let me just quickly close this section, extrude it inside, that will do. 
And one other thing that I would like to do is just add one support of edge here and one support of edge here because we are going to need that. And now that we are here, let me just add a few of them here as well and can delete this. All right, so now we have that set up. So basically now the only thing that we need to do is select these two objects. So we need to select both helix and, uh, let me just check one thing, all right. Both the helix and the cylinder and go to mesh boolean. So basically you can also go here to mesh booleans and then union and simply hit Q to confirm the two. So yeah, uh, now we have the same uh, the one object from these two. So if you hit three to check the subdivision, this is going to be your result. Uh, now there's a problem with this result. Uh, and the problem is more obvious. If I go to vertice, select one and then hit three, you will see that now, actually it's gonna be even more obvious if I go to select camera based selection off. Uh, when you think that you selected one vertice, actually two of them are going to be selected. So, meaning that we still need to uh, merge these vertices together. So instead of going one by one, I'm just going to select one and then right double click somewhere else to select all of them. And then what we're going to do is merge vertices and I'm all going to open this little box right here. Now, depending on the threshold, uh, if you have too low a threshold, nothing will happen. And if you have too big of a threshold, then something else might happen that you don't want to know. So uh, what I found for me, usually I start from uh, very low thresholds and then building it up until it works. And this is my default value that kind of works in most of the situations. So 0.01. And once you hit apply, you will see that now the result is a bit uh, cleaner. Uh, also, one thing worth mentioning about the threshold is that if you have, let's say, edges uh, that are, let me just delete this one real quick. If you have edges that are really, really close, uh, it, it can be that those merge vertices, uh, that merge vertice operation also affects these two and then by accident merge them together like that. So. Also just something uh, worth keeping an eye out. All right, so basically now that we have um, this set up, now we just need to clean it up a bit. And what we need to do cl to clean up is basically just close this end gun right here. And to do that, I'm just going to select these outer edges and select this part right here. And the only thing now that we need to do is just a small bevel. Uh, I thought this I selected as well. So basically we need all three selected and then do the small bevel. All right, I think that will do. Uh, if you have problem like this, it's really not a big deal. So I'm just gonna use our target world and connect these two together. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Go to vertice, target world, and there we are. So uh, now we need to just close this part and this part. So basically now we have end guns here. And to do that, it's fairly simple. We just need to connect this point to this point here, this point to this point here. And let me just slide this a bit and slide this part as well. Connect this to here, this to here. Uh, just make sure that it connected. So there we are, so slide this here. So basically now we have quad here and 
quad is here, quad is here. Now, the thing is, this part could look a bit like it's stretching simply because it is pinching. It is, uh, we do have one, two, three, four, five edges here. So, but if you really want to have all quads, then this is how it's, how it could uh, look like. And also one thing that you can do if you want to play with transitions so that it's not as rough, I can push this here inside and select this part and just go to edit edge flow and do the same thing here. Just maybe slide it a bit here, push it a bit inside and select this, go to edit edge flow and go to object mode so that it's not as aggressive. So yeah, uh, basically that is it. Uh, now the thing how you would do it on the inside is exactly the same. So I'm going to just control H to hide this. And let me add a bit of thickness here. Select this and this. Uh, add like so. And also, uh, if you want to be sure that they fit, you can also check that as well. So if you need maybe scale something, you can play with that as well. But for the demonstration purpose, I'm just gonna speed up things. And let me push this a bit more up. And here, what I'd like to do is then add supportive edge. And again, whilst we're adding edges, I can add a few here as well, like so. Just want to make sure that we have enough room here. So that, that's why we are adding the support of edge loop, because if we are not, then if you remember what we did previously, we connected this point to that support of edge. And in this case, we would need to connect this point to here and that just wouldn't work well. So let's just add one edge loop here just in case. And we're going to need same thing here up one edge loop here. Okay, let's just leave it for now like this. All right, uh, the same thing, uh, except one small difference is that this parts need to go inside. So I'm just going to scale it again until I'm pretty sure that this edge is on the outside. Doesn't have to be much, but important thing is that it's on the outside. You can still play with the size, radius, and so on if you really want. So uh, now what I'm going to do is just select the first cylinder and then the helix and go to Mesh, Booleans, Difference. And if we hit Q to confirm, now you will see that it's punched on the inside. And what we're going to do, the same thing with the vertices. Just select one, double right click, go to Merge Vertices, make sure we have enough threshold, close. And then we have the result that we had previously as well. All right, so now only thing that we need to do is again, just select these edges right here and then do a bevel. So something like this. And in case the uniform did not work for you, we can again just weld these together. Let me just delete the history and let me see if I can connect. Okay, so here's something going on. Let me just delete this. Just quick fix. Connect these two so I can actually use these vertices to weld them here and then create that geometry that we had here and do the same thing on top. So basically just again, weld tool, uh, by the way, weld tool, you can find verge, verge C's target weld. It's right here. I just have it on a hotkey and there we are. And again, uh, multi cut to connect these two points. And what we can do is same like we did before. Just make that transition even smoother. Select this edge and edit edge flow. Here as well. 
select this, edit edge flow, use vertice, slide us a bit. So yeah, uh, I would say more or less that this is it. So just my approach and how I would do uh, spiral geometry, both on the outside and on the inside. And if something was not clear enough, feel free to use the comment section down below and I'll try to answer if I can. Uh, and yeah, more or less, I'd say that is all. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.